Hello, welcome to another Q&A. My name is Camelia Shofani, and I am the Senior Manager for Public Programs and Events here at the International Documentary Association. For our blind or low vision attendees, I'm going to describe myself. I have dark curly hair, light skin, and brown eyes, and I'm wearing a black sweater vest. I'd like to thank uh, our media sponsors, Variety and KCRW, for bringing the 2022 screening series to our members. This evening, we'll have a conversation between KCRW's Elvis Mitchell and director Nadia Hallgren and producer Roger Ross Williams, whose film Civil premiered at Tribeca Film Festival earlier this year. For more information on our screening series lineup and Q&As, please visit documentary.org forward slash screening dash series. Before we get started, um, as always, I would like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. We recognize the Gabrielino Tongva as the past, present, and future caretakers of the land, water, and cultural resources in the unceded territory of Los Angeles. And now, without further ado, I give to you the Q&A for Civil. I'm also wearing green, uh, a light green jacket and striped green and black t-shirt. My hair used to be dark, now it's gray, and I am brown skin. Now I'll ask Nadia to introduce yourself. Hey everyone, I'm Nadia. I uh, am wearing a black long sleeve shirt. I have brown and sort of blondish curly hair, um, light brown skinned, and I'm here in New York City. And Roger, let us know. I can't wait to hear this description. Okay, yeah. All right. My name is Roger. Um, I am wearing a light gray, or though it does read white on this thing, light gray uh, buttoned up shirt, a gray jacket, all designer. And um, I have brown skin and, <laughs> and uh, dark brown skin and um, black hair, brown eyes. There you go. Yeah, my goodness, designer. Well, okay. I guess it, the D in IDA is for international designer acolytes. There you go. This is. For. See, this is all new to me. Let me start by asking Nadia a question. I have to tell you, Nadia, my favorite part of, the, my favorite sort of thing about the movie is subtextually that it's all about community and how Ben really builds himself by being a part of a community. He talks about being in that family and the, that section where we get to see him pledging Omega Sci-Fi and talking about that community. And then he also builds community when he, he does these cases. I want to know when that idea came to you to make that the building block of the movie because it's a really interesting thing and it, it makes him a part of a world and not just this separate kind of lone avenger that he's so often demonized in the media for being. Well, thank you, Elvis. Uh, one thing that struck me about Ben Crump when I first met him was he was unlike any other attorney I had ever met in my life. And he just had all these very special qualities that, you know, from a character building, and development perspective, you just know that uh, there it's really important things to include in his backstory so that people can understand who he is. So his commitment to his fraternity, Omega Sci-Fi is such a big part of his life. So we actually went through incredible lengths to try and track down the stepping footage. We had heard early on it existed. And I could tell you, we didn't actually get our hands on it almost until the very end of filming and it involved meeting a stranger somewhere in South Florida in a Starbucks in the pouring rain and getting handed an envelope <laughs> with this tape in it and praying that uh, there was actually this footage on there. So that's how committed we were to uh, developing Ben's backstory and showing that the same way that he connects with community when he is uh, building his cases and when these tragedies happen is really just part of who he is as a person. And he does that with family and with everyone around him. Well, I think, again, that's something that makes this for me a distinctive kind of storytelling and that 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 backstory, I don't want to call it a B story because it's not, because it's certainly is woven into beautifully, I think, in thematic terms, but it lets us know that he, I mean, that sort of, he talks about his mom sort of saying it's all on your shoulders when he was a kid and mm -hmm. and how he's still bearing up under that and and that 
he's not bearing up under that alone though. I mean, that's important. He's always talking about there being a team and, and just that you separate him because again, so often in media coverage of him, he's treated as this lone person, as mm -hmm. this troublemaker, as this disruptor. And that couldn't be further from who and what he is, could it? Absolutely. You know, part of, I think our, our obligation and also one of the wonderful things about being a black filmmaker and telling black stories is we have an opportunity to tap into the nuance of our own culture that we know so deeply and that uh, is very special and that I know for myself that I want to bring to audiences that I want global audiences that I get to connect with a film like this to just have this like deeper understanding and to bring people closer to, to, to our world, you know? And so I think for me that Ben provided an incredible opportunity with his character and the way that he was raised and with his family and, and these stories to be able to, to actually do that. Roger, if you could tell me what your first conversations were with Nadia about the project, how this sort of go boil up and, and, and reduce into this beautiful film. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, our first conversations is that, you know, it, exactly what the first question you asked is that Ben is so, such an important part of the black community and his experiences, you know, he grew up in the, in the, in the project. He's a, he's a black, man before he's a lawyer right that's that's his that's his and 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 the reason why he does this work is because of his own experiences his own experiences growing up his own watching you know as he as in the title of his book open season on black people you know he's passionate about this so i think the first conversations with nani was about how do we capture that in a way that is real and honest in a way that only um, a black filmmaker could capture, you know, a filmmaker of color could capture, could be in the only way that only Nadia, who is an incredible verite shooter, you know, who ha is one of the best in the in the business and documentary and shooting verite could it could could embed with him and live with him and, and humanize him and really capture his true self and true experiences. And that was really where we started. And that was really why Nadia it was the perfect director to, to make this film. I'm glad you brought up her, her experience as a, as a shooter because Nadia, what's fascinating about the movie is that we get been in these very formal, almost portrait-like compositions at the beginning of the movie when we see him, to introduce him as this figure who looms large and also, because you sort of get him silhouetted early on, is like you're sort of saying, well, we're going to sort of peel back the onion and expose him to light. And I want to talk to you about that too, because that's a really fascinating way to open the film. Yeah, we, uh, I'm sure like many folks out here listening that are filmmakers, uh, the opening scene of the film was just such a critical part to introducing people to Ben Crump and also so challenging in terms of uh, what we wanted people to know about him and also how this story sort of began. So we end up starting the film mainly with a phone call from George Floyd's cousin that had been recorded when uh, Tara Brown, who's his cousin, uh, Floyd's cousin, reached out to Ben Crump's law firm and they record all the phone calls that come in. And so we were able to access that phone call. And then we had this beautiful footage that I had filmed of him in a hotel room uh, at a separate time, of course, but it was very impressionistic. And so I think that was the idea of the opening of this film um, that people really understood, you know, there's a lot of questions around Ben Crump, who he is, what are his motives? How does he connect with these families? How does he get these big cases? You know, uh, he gets accused of chasing down families and being an ambulance chaser and, and kind of being hot on the tail of the next big news story where the truth is that um, he's, as, as a lawyer, he's not even allowed to reach out to families when these tragedies occur. It's against uh, the Bar Association. So 
he really just waits for people to call him. And because he is so known in the black community, uh, I had asked Tara, uh, Tara Brown, I said, how did you know about Ben Crump? And she said, when Trayvon Martin was killed and I saw Ben Crump on the news, my family sat down and they said, if something ever happens to one of us, we're calling Ben Crump. And that was 10 years before her cousin George Floyd was murdered. So um, it was really important for me to present Ben as this, as you said, like this mystery that we're sort of gonna get to learn about. And at the same time, really establish from the beginning how people connect with Ben and that the, 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 the springboard for what happens throughout the rest of the film happened in that moment when um, he connected with the George Floyd family and you know, America and the world was changed forever. What's was interesting about this, and Rogers, you brought up the book Open Season, which I reread last night, is that he's a really empathetic storyteller. I mean, he, he, in the way he sort of talks, I mean, the book actually sounds like him, but mm -hmm. these sort of these, these observations he drops are about him in these stories, and we get a real sense of who he is. Um, and, and this sense of optimism and kind of moving forward. And I think that's something that Nadi really got to the film, didn't she? That, that, that sense of just let's, we can't stop. We can't take this moment and rejoice. What's the next thing going to be? He said, I said to, to, to Ben, how do you keep going on? How do you keep doing this? And he's like, Roger, they're still killing black people. They're still killing black people. I can't rest. You know, what's amazing about Ben is that and I think this is why the families connect to him is because you can, he, you can feel that he actually feels it in his soul. This is, this is not just work. He feels it, you feel it with him. You, he's with there with them in their pain and their struggle. Um, but I'll let Nadia answer your question, but I just had to say that. That's just so, they, you can be with him and you can, you can feel it. And I'm, I, whatever the, the way he's presented on TV, you can see a little bit of that, but, when you're in this film and you're in the room with Ben and those families, there's no one else in that room. Ben is with them in their pain and in their struggle. And you can feel that. This is the first time you can feel it. And, and, and the, way the, the way the media presents him is just terrible, but everybody should watch this film because you get to see the real Ben Crump and why he connects with all these people and their tragedies. Yeah, Nadia, if you could talk a little bit about that too, because again, he is clearly this enormously empathetic and positive guy. Mm -hmm. And again, because mm -hmm. he's so often shown, and you even have that great clip from uh, with Ted Koppel grilling him and in effect accusing him. <laughs> wow, will he be that under researched about anybody else except for a black lawyer? Probably not. Mm -hmm. uh, but. <laughs> he comes, not comes across, we get to see who he is. If you read the book, you know that, but this guy who's capable of enormous empathy, but is in motion constantly. Yeah, it's interesting. I think one of the moments where I fully felt like I understood Ben Crump was in the scene with the Andre Hill family, where he, you know, and this is Verite, what we know is that we're riding in a car, we're in Columbus, Ohio, we are headed to meet with a family who just lost their loved one. It's the day after Christmas. Um, and this man is deeply loved. He's a great father. He's a great brother. Um, he's a pillar in his community. And his life was taken from all these people. So we arrive and there's a lot of angry, people, family members, friends in this room, and they want some answers and you could feel the tension. And, you know, and I'm there with the camera. And of course I feel as, you know, it, should I be here? Should I be documenting this moment? I asked the family their permission. They said it was fine. And we walk in there and the way you see Ben handle this moment and take on a family who's grieving, who's angry, who are confused, who are upset. They don't know which way to turn to next. And he goes through every range of emotion. He allows them to tell the stories that they wanna tell about uh, their loved one and learn more about him and then set them on a mission. And by the end of that scene, they're laughing and they're engaging with Ben and they go through this entire uh, 
a grieving uh, interaction with him. And when I walked out of that room, I was, I was like, I've never seen that before in my life. I've never seen anyone handle individuals with grief in such a way that he just understands every stage of it. And also that setting them on a mission to feel like in this moment, they can't have their loved one back, but this is the best course that they can take to seek justice. And that even if that gives them a little bit of comfort, that that's what they need in that moment. And I just thought that that was incredible. I think what's really so interesting about this too, is just, again, I was talking about that optimism that comes through that, and, and, and at no point is he worn down by this because there's such a sense of mission that again, goes back to the thing we were talking about at the outset, which is that he's actually nourished by this contact that he has with other people. Absolutely. I mean, it, when you see someone doing their life's work, they don't get tired. And, you know, Ben wore us to the ground. I mean, there was never a day that, you know, as soon as the news story broke, I just waited for, to get that text message from Ben saying, this is where I'm going to be. If you if you're in, you know, pick me up. <laughs> And so that was that was what the experience with Ben was like. And he's he does he does not get discouraged. He does not get tired. He doesn't get worn down. His sense of purpose and his mission keeps him smiling. It keeps him able to share that warmth and that comfort with the families that need it the most. And it also uh, gives him that energy to fight in the press, to fight in the streets, to fight in the courtrooms to get the justice that he knows that uh our people deserve can you tell me about getting his confidence because i've got to wonder and he addresses a little bit in the book because he's so often turned into this basically this opportunistic avenger um he must be a little bit wary about media and and about not being able to present his story and also in a lot of ways knowing that's not important what's important is winning the case so getting him to go along with this talk to me about that I think one thing I learned about Ben, he really has nothing to hide, like nothing to hide. You know, it's like he picks up the phone. He talks to everyone on speaker. You know, it's like he'll let you in his his home, meet all his family. You become part of his family. He's not hiding anything. So he didn't feel that there was any reason to be skeptical, as well as I came I met I met attorney Crump essentially through Kenya Barris, who is a friend of his and had been working with him on uh, some other projects. And when the George Floyd murder happened, uh, they decided that it was the time to make a film, to do a documentary because everything was folding and unfolding in real time. So I was connected with Kenya and K Kenya ultimately um, introduced me to Ben and, you know, of course, making the film with Michelle Obama becoming was definitely helpful for, uh, you know, as a co-sign as to someone that uh, can be deeply trusted and can be let in the room and understand, um, be able to, you know, read a situation and, and just be that type of filmmaker. So, yeah, but I would definitely say Ben, I, I, I never, I never, there was never a crack in the story the entire time. It was, it was kind of amusing to me after a while because uh, he, he's just that actually good of a human being. Well, Roger wouldn't understand this. When you take him to that store to buy shoes off the rack rather than having somebody make them for you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so true, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think, I think just to add to that, you know, it's the sign of a true great verite shooter that, you know, Nadia is really good at just putting her subjects at ease and then disappearing, you know? And if, if you know, she, you know, whether it's Michelle Obama, which is probably not easy to do, um, you know, <laughs> uh, but, you know, considering everything that's around her or, or, you know, Ben and Ben, one of the great things I think that happens in the doc is like, you know, when Ben is stopping, pulling his car over to the side of the road and opening his laptop on the hood of the car, when he's, you know, that sort of the capturing the craziness of his life is just, and he forgets that Nadia's there. He's just 
doing what he does and Nadia just disappears and becomes this, this and is almost organic to the, to, the, to, the, to the process and becomes part of the team. And she became really part of his, his team. That's how she was able to, to, she just, she was just always there, you know? And that's, that's a sign of a true great, um, great filmmaker, a great um, verite filmmaker. Yeah, you're right. But not only that, but that becoming, we also see there's point of view and there's deliberation in this. And, and the time she takes with letting us get to know the subjects. I mean, we're talking about Michelle, well, she's not here, but <laughs> sort of presenting them as this thing, especially when it comes to black, to media and the way black people are perceived as she sort of gives us an image at the beginning and then letting us find out about the subjects in their own words, but also through shot process or the shot selection, there's real deliberation in that, that builds to that incredible moment uh, at the end when the we're awaiting the verdict for the criminal trial, which I, we all know, but I still find myself tense, like, well, what's going to happen here? And that, that's how much she has sort of like used this, her technique to, to build this, this tension and to build this really emotional piece of narrative rather than the conventional ABC of it. And, and, and Nadia, I want you to talk about that because that's something I've really come to think about you as being that kind of filmmaker who wants to build an emotional story rather than just a conventional narrative. Absolutely. I mean, I think for me, emotion is everything in filmmaking as, as a cinematographer, you know, I think I would just spend hours and hours agonizing and looking through a viewfinder and you could point your camera in one direction or the other. And, and I was just always like, where's the emotion here? You know, there could be a hundred things happening in a room and you need to really focus in on one and not get pulled in a million directions. So how do you make that decision? Where is the emotion? And it's not always where you think it is. And so I think for me, as I was spending so much time with Ben and just experiencing his world and, and asking myself, what, is, what makes me emotional when I'm around Ben? You know, what, what is it that makes me feel like he's just such a special human being and that he's, he's operating in this world way different from anyone I've ever met. And so that is where I decided to really point the camera and focus on. And, you know, sometimes it was through humor. Sometimes it was just through, you know, sometimes he's up totally absurd. And sometimes he's, you know, there's just, you know, like when he goes to Burlington and he's buying his, his, you know, $30 slip-ons, you know, and you know, he just wants a massive case that every, everyone calls him, you know, says all these things about him, but that's just who he is. And I think that for me, all those moments, whether they're serious or they're funny, or they're just, you know, uh, giving ourselves a moment to sit with him, help build up to that tension that we feel in the courtroom. Because now you know that man that is just there praying and knowing that it's not a given that Derek Chauvin was gonna be convicted in the way that he was because he's been in that seat before and it didn't happen. And you learn that about him too. So you understand why he's not just hanging out like we got this even though there's all that video and there's all these other things that uh, one would suggest that that's how it should be. And we're just with him in that moment. And so when that verdict comes in, we really feel that sense of victory uh, and that sense of, you know, this moment, like he said, this was the moment that um, cases like this don't come around enough where, police officers are convicted on that level. And so when, when he, when that victory gets handed down, it's a, it's a special moment for all of us. But I think because we're on the way we're on this journey with him, it, it adds an extra layer of, of emotion to it. And you set that up too, by showing us, you know, the aftermath of Breonna Taylor civil case, you know, that this is not a fait accompli just because you get a verdict that may seem to be justice in one venue doesn't mean you're going to get justice in another. Mm -hmm. And and that is also part of an ongoing struggle. I just thought using that as kind of like an, in part of the second act. So I say, wait a second now, let's not presume <laughs> that because you get this, you, you're going to get that. And like, there's so much happening in that, you know, when that verdict comes down and how he's handling it and has to, he has to handle his family who are more upset about it than he is, or mm -hmm. at least apparently. I mean, I thought that was really about somebody who know, understands how to navigate chaos and direct this yeah. kind of 
to almost havoc into something that's compassionate and about uh, progress rather than just letting it sort of weigh him down. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the incredible things about Ben Crump is his ability to process and still keep going. And, you know, when, when that happened with Breonna Taylor, that's the most upset I saw him the entire time we were filming. He took that very, very personally. And, you know, one thing he always says, like, we can't take our foot off the gas, like, don't ever give up hope. And what we even seen just a few weeks ago, some of the the individuals who were complicit in ultimately Breonna Taylor's death, like the officers that signed the false search warrant, the officers who lied to get it, you know, they're now being held accountable. And although, again, it will never bring Breonna Taylor back, knowing that there is some justice and that these folks are being told like, no, you're not going to get away with this. Even if Ben Crump isn't on that criminal side or prosecuting those individuals, the noise that he makes puts pressure on all the people who are and all those people in the jury that decide that those people should at least be indicted or that they should go to prison. It all matters, you know, and that's one thing that I've learned from Ben. Like, even if you don't see the victory in the moment, don't think that it's not possible that it will come. So don't give up and don't get discouraged and don't take your foot off the gas. Let me ask you this, Roger, because so much of what you've done has been about the way people sort of think about the marginalized on camera, be it my suffering from autism or, or prudent. And I wonder too, if one of the things that you liked about the story of Ben is that it gives you a chance to sort of deal with the way media perceive people, uh, people of color, somebody ignoring that and sticking to mission. There's, there's just so many things that make me think that this is kind of an ideal thing half up to fall in your lap. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you, you know, when I would talk about this, this project to people, they'd be like, oh, Ben Crump, oh, he's controversial, he's problematic. And, and so the big mission here, you know, in a way, just like, you know, Owen, like you said, Owen and Life Animated or, or Prudence or many of the, the types of stories that I try to tell is that, you know, Ben is an outsider. He's not, he's, and he's fighting against, you know, a system of injustice and he has to overcome that. And then the media portrays him in the way that they do. And the, the, so the objective was to, to humanize him and to present him. And so that people can, you know, you meet Ben He's so charismatic. He's so incredible. You fall in love with Ben, you know, pretty pretty quickly. You know, I watched him at the Rebecca premiere. He seduced that audience with his just his introduction. You know, he's such a charismatic speaker. He's such a compassionate speaker. But how do we, you, you how do we, you know, make that happen on screen in a way that the audience you know, falls in love with him and that we, you know, sort of fight these, these perceptions. So it's about fighting injustice. You know, they're always gonna demonize a powerful, brilliant um, black man like Ben Crump who is fighting a system that is stacked against us on so many ways. So he's always gonna be demonized, but our goal is, as filmmakers is to humanize him and that's what was so attractive about this project here's this great opportunity mm -hmm. yeah Nadia there's this real sense and that I think is really important in this film and 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 I love that you did this this sense that life goes on I mean in, in the midst of all these terrible enormous tragedies that are really affecting the social fabric of not only this country but the world as you show us in all that footage of protests from around the world uh, that that story that and that young woman coming in and talking about being discriminated at the bank, and a, a case that's so blatant that even the cops say, "Call a lawyer." This woman is discriminating against you. I mean, that first of all shows us what the iceberg is been beneath the tip for Ben's law practice. But it's also too about sort of like writ large and writ small what black oppression is like. It's not just walking down the street and being stopped by the police. It's going in and just trying to do your business, and then calling the police and being afraid when they get there, they're not going to take your side. I mean, that, to me, that could almost have been its own documentary. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I think that story, you know, 
we were actually filming Black Farmers and Ben Crump was like, you know, we were in, in Virginia and Ben, ben says, oh, I, I have a client I want to meet in person in Baltimore. It's really close. And we map it and it's six hours. And he's like, we have to drive there overnight. This is how Ben is. And, and we're just like, we've been up since 4 a.m. And so we, we came to an agreement that we would drive halfway three hours, sleep for a couple hours in a hotel, and then keep going because, you know, we want to get there in one piece. So um, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I'm just on the ride with Ben. I'm like, let's, let's go. Let's do it. And when we showed up at Shira Brown's house and she tells that story, I mean, you know, I, I was weeping in the camera because even though, as you said, that's not a story of being, you know, killed by the police or something like that. It's something that I think we all can relate to. And, you know, I, that was my mom. I saw my mom in that story, you know, and, and when I shared the story with Roger, same, you know, Roger and, and I know each other well. I know stories about his mom and how he grew up. And I think you just know that that is so heartbreaking and the, the, the lack of dignity that you show someone in that moment and how that can just affect someone so much beyond that, that um, we knew that it was important to include in the story so that people get an understanding that this, you know, that racism isn't just in law enforcement, but it is literally in every step you make, you're just trying to do your business, take care of your children, be an honest citizen, and even that becomes complicated by by a racist society. It was yeah, Roger, talk about that scene too, because I think it's it's really extraordinary because again, in addition to everything else we're talking about here, it's just about life goes on. I mean, this he's got to do all these things and and listen to that woman in the same way he listened to Breonna Taylor's family and to George Floyd's family too. I think a, um, I think only a small part of Ben's practice is about um, police uh, uh, brutality and, and, and uh, injustice by the police. Um, a large part of what Ben does is that kind of work, you know, um, work with the work. This, and it was important to put those scenes in the film to show the scope of Ben's work. So it's, it's black farmers, it's banking and housing. And all, that is the, the, the majority of his work. And that is massive, that affects everyone all across the country on, 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 in every single day. And it's just like, so it was important to show that this isn't, Ben isn't just dealing with these big high profile media stories. He's dealing with everyday people and their struggles, the struggles that my, like, like Nadia said, that my mother had, that the struggles that I experienced, you know, as a child being redlined, the experience of, of discrimination, but all of that is part of the, the reality of being a black person in America. And Ben is fighting this and it's, it's overwhelming, but like you said, Elvis, he does it with a smile and always thinking positive and looking forward. And he's like, we're gonna win we're gonna win this battle, we're gonna overcome this. And just like Nadi said, without taking our feet off the gas. So that was important to show how the scope of everything he's doing. And, and one other thing I'd, I'd like to add is that, you know, this, this young woman has this $90 check and it seems so small. And then it's hard enough to even get a lawyer to return your phone call. Imagine this high profile lawyer that you see on TV every day, just showing up at your house over a $90 check and say, you matter, you're important. And I made it, I made sure that I could be here to look you in the eye and tell you that you're not alone and that we're gonna, we're gonna make sure you get justice together. Again, that just speaks to Ben's character because anyone could have sent a paralegal or a phone call or whatever at that moment, but he knew that that woman needed something more than that. And he was there for her. And I just, that, that against me, that just spoke volumes to his character. Go to, go, just go to, all you have to do is go to Ben's, you know, social media account, Instagram or, or Twitter, and you see the scope of what he's doing. He can be with a young kid who's have to cut off their, their locks because, you know, uh, it's the, the school because their school, you, you know, that that kind of he's just he's just across the board doing mm -hmm. all this work on on so many levels. And if you all you have to do is dig deeper.
go to bencrump.com and you will see the work all across. It's amazing. I watch his videos and I'm like, wait, wait, now he's in some high school? <laughs> this kid who's on the wrestling team? He has to have his, he's to, they're, to make, they're cutting his locks off, they're holding him down and Ben is right there. It's crazy. <laughs> As a last question for both of you, um, there's a moment that sort of made me stop me cold in the midst of all this, when he just says, I'm always fearful, but that's more like an admission of fact rather than just saying it's this thing that cripples him. And again, to what we've all been talking about, this sense of mission, this sense of love of community that, that he understands and loves being part of community. He doesn't want to do any of this stuff alone. And I want to ask you both hearing that, because it really, it, it made me stop and go back and rewind and make sure I heard what I thought I had heard. Um, so I want you both to talk about that because that's, I think that's an important admission. And it's just, again, just one of the many bricks in this beautiful construction that you put together, Nadia. But I want you both to talk about that moment. That's about him too, not giving in to fear and then and, and this thing he must impart to the people to whom he speaks. So I'll start with you though, Roger, talking about that moment. Um. I, I think someone like Ben, he's such a hero because if anyone is going to be a target, and so you are so easily a target these days in this country, what is going on in this country, you, at any moment, you know, a white, white supremacy could take you out. And, and Ben is a lightning rod for that. And he doesn't let that stop him. In a way, Ben's faith, Ben's, Ben's mission drives him beyond fear to a place where he's so driven that he's, he's not going to, if the bullet comes, it comes, it, but Ben is, is not gonna fear that. And, it's, and for, for me, and I think for a lot of people watching this film, it is so inspirational. It, it makes you think about your own life and, and, and what, are you, what do you stand for and what are you gonna fight for in your own life? Are you gonna sit there or are you gonna fight for, for what the, the for basic human rights that we all deserve as black Americans? So he inspires me and I hope he inspires, and I know he will inspire the audience. Nadia? Absolutely, I mean, I agree with everything Roger said. I think he, Ben has an incredible amount of faith. And he also always says if something ever happens to him, he can't think of a more noble way to be taken off of this earth than doing the work that he does. And that he cannot let any individual group, whatever, put fear into him to the extent that he's he stops being out there with the people doing what he does. You know, there's not a person that comes up to Ben in the street that he doesn't shake their hand or talk to a young person when they ask him, yeah, I want to go to law school. What advice do you have for me? You know, and it, it I mean, he could be late to the airport and he's still talking to, you know, we're like, Ben, we got to go. Um, that's just the way he is. And he's like that black, white, young, old. I mean, I just, it, he, again he's so extraordinary in that sense and in leaving himself exposed he he just will not let anyone take that opportunity to to connect with people away from him and um and again i think that's just such an admirable quality and uh to just be up there with families when they need him and to be able to move freely the way he does you know i i just don't think he it's he won't give that up for anything even you know his own safety well, I guess that's a really inspirational note to end on. Uh, thank you guys so much, Roger. Thank you. And Nadia, thank you for this incredible film. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, Elvis. Thanks and thank you, Roger, for being such a wonderful producer and EP on our film. You know, I love you. And Roger, Roger and I go way back, as he said, but Roger also uh, gave me my first opportunity as a director ever with uh, After Maria. And I will be so forever grateful for that. And I'm so happy we were able to collaborate again on, on Civil. It's such a special film at a special time and a special experience. So thank you, Roger. And thank you, IDA, for uh, having us. Thank you, Appreciate Nadia. It. I know talent when I see it. <laughs> <laughs>